Now, here's what I want you to know that you won't hear elsewhere. We reported this uh, about six months ago, and it is the what the communist, the Chinese Communist Party has up its sleeve in any economic war. Re- recall that we covered this on the blaze and uh, on this radio program during the first quarter of this year. And what we talked about was how China's central bank created $50 trillion U.S. in off-balance sheet currency between 2015 and 2018. Now, this was according to the People's Bank of China, their annual financial stability report. It was on page 62. We told you this is just them saying, oh, you know what? We're going to open another set of books and we're going to make $50 trillion. We're just going to print $50 trillion. Now, that $50 trillion created from thin air was loaned to Chinese banks and government-controlled companies. It is not counted on their balance sheet as public debt. It's actually being counted as an asset since it was loaned off the balance sheet from the central bank to the Chinese. This sounds bad for them, but I want you to continue to listen. As reported in Foreign Policy magazine, an estimated 25 trillion of that currency was used to refinance zombie companies and the, 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 the banks have. They're building these cities. There's nothing. They're building these companies. They're nothing. They're all declining. They're all falling apart. And so the Communist Party is propping them up. So half, 25 trillion, was loaned to support these companies and these ghost cities. The other $25 trillion was used to invest in Western financial markets via offshore entities, which means no one knows who owns what stocks and bonds and funds. Of that, between $14 and $16 trillion, the Chinese took and invested in our equities, stocks, all held in these shell corporations that we don't know. Another $10 trillion invested in other Western equities, including real estate, stocks, and bonds of the U, Canada, and Australia. Now, Rubio got wind of this in late 2018, and in March 2019, he introduced the Equitable Act, an amendment to the Sarbanes-Oxley Accounting Act of 2002. It would require any foreign corporate entity wishing to acquire U.S. equities to report on ownership structure, the parent companies, prior to executing an equity purchase. Not a bad idea, but the act would not be retroactive. So the 14 to $16 trillion controlled by the Chinese Communist Party via the shell companies and banks is already done. So what does that all mean? Do you remember when uh, the financial crash happened in 2008? The Pentagon reported that there was a flash crash. Somebody, a sovereign fund, which is not $16 trillion, a sovereign fund pulled all of their money out of the stock market, which precipitated the crash. What this means is that the Cold War between us and China could turn into a very hot war, financially speaking, And the president of China has his finger on a massive launch button. And that button doesn't say launch missiles, doesn't say nukes. It just says sell. If the president orders the Chinese government or the communists order these companies a sell order, he can uh, effectively crash all of our stock markets. And since we're talking about funny money, because they, they just printed it, they don't have any problem. I mean, no skin off their nose. It's not real money. They're playing with monopoly money, and they could crash our markets. Now, it's unlikely that our president has no idea that the Chinese hold a significant amount of U.S. stocks. On the books, China officially states that they own about $3 trillion of our stocks and our real estate 
not including the $1.6 trillion in U.S. sovereign bonds. So when they say they're funding our debt, what they have is $1.6 trillion of our bonds. We are now talking about $14 to $16 trillion in our stock market alone. In total, that's $25 trillion in Western U.S. equities and real estate. What isn't clear is our appetite to take this risk and how real we think this threat is. But make no mistakes. The Chinese Communist Party seems positioned to weaponize our U.S. financial assets against us should they choose to turn a Cold War into a hot one. And everyone will poo-poo this. Everyone will say it won't be in their best interest. And that's true. But when you're dealing with communists, the Chinese, and people who look at humiliation completely differently, do not expect those people to play by the rules you understand. 